Hey, what's up, you guys? Happy Saturday. Welcome to Episode 7 of the First and 10 NFL New York Jets podcast. How you doing this morning, brother? I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. I'm kind of <laughs> glad you do the intro because I never get the title right. <laughs> I don't know. Listen, getting... <laughs> listen, I went to school for this. OK, OK. I'm just getting old. And I, you know, I was walking around my neighborhood the other day and I saw two Jeff and I was like, oh, you got to watch my podcast. You got to watch my I'm doing with my buddy. You got to watch it. What's the name of it? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, but it's on YouTube. Go look. <laughs> I'm going to get it tattooed on my arm. Like, you know, a bull boy. Well, like like Rex stuff. Sanchez. There exactly. You. So I need to show people. It's right here. It's on my back. <laughs> oh, man. So what's been going on? Nothing, I, nothing. Yeah, as as you know, rookie mini camp started. We yes, got yes. Friday, I Saturday, and a Sunday. Film of Sacky boy throw it. Yes. Yeah. So we got mini camp on the way. And uh, I was very surprised that um, the turnout for this mini camp. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was good. Well, yeah. they, they said, hey, I saw stories I saw said the rookies came in ready to work. So, yeah, that's a good thing. It seems like all eight showed up. All 12 undrafted free agents showed up. Plus, yep. we have to discuss the five tryout players. I'm not familiar with them. I'll throw out their names later. Maybe you are. They sure. showed up. And, and what I what I'm what I like and what I didn't like, but again, it's early. I like the fact that six draft picks have already been signed. Yes. Yes. That's a good no, that's a good thing. Yeah. Absolutely. What I'm worried about is that the top four draft picks weren't signed, but it's early yet, and they're in mini camp. So mm -hmm. hats off to them. Hats yep. off to Soller and his crew. And Joe D, he's winning me over. He's winning me over. Slowly but surely, Slowly right? Slowly but surely, yep. Uh, there's plenty of time left. No, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Uh, listen, I, I, I read a lot of the blogs, which I'm sure you do. Yep. And I, I'm sure the, the, the people who write on these blogs are our age, but maybe not. Mm -hmm. They're a little more, like, ready to rock. I'm a little more baby steps. Like, I'm just uh, fearful well, that... Like I said, the thousand day clock, we're going to be experienced. Spinning. That's why yeah. we're experienced jet fans. Yeah, exactly. And again, I don't know. It doesn't say, you know, the, the woman's age or the guy's age who, who blogs this, who, who leaves their comments. So I don't know, but, uh, I'm I mean, more the baby steps. I've seen this story played out. It's a bad many, I was just going to say, we've seen this movie before. Yeah. How many a, off seasons do we say? Oh yeah. 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 And by the middle Season to the end three, of October. Yeah, it's, like, a bad, yeah. <laughs> it's a bad deja vu story. It's a bad deja <laughs> yeah. vu. It's like, a, it's like a tape loop that just yeah. keeps playing over and over. Yeah, you know? You know what else I thought was cool this week? Go for it. That only 12 players in the entire league from the entire draft class have signed their contracts. Wow. And <laughs> six of them are Jets. Yes, yeah, so, and... and, and I, I saw the other day the coach signed five of there. So who's the other one? One. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I didn't, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. Good question. Wow. And, you know, and, and that's good because again, our, our viewers could comment and let us know. Mm -hmm. I always feel like we never get our draft class signed quick. I know. You know, the Darrell Reeves, couple, right? Yeah, the Darrell Reeves was a headache back then. Mm -hmm. The Jamal Adams was a headache back then. Yep. Uh, you know. Yep. And the thing is, what I don't get is that if it's a standard rookie contract, what is there to argue about? This is the rule. This is the dollar. Sign right. It, and let's it is go. what it is. Yeah. I Sign know. it and let's go. But you know what? 60% of our, our, our draft class is signed. All the undraftees were signed. They're in practice. And we have five tryout players. I'm going to throw the names out there. Maybe you heard of them. Three of them are wide receivers, which are nice. I don't know. Yes. If yeah, fake. yeah. Hey, but, you can never have too many of those. No, agree. Agree. So we signed uh, our try. Well, we didn't sign them. They're tryout players. Uh, Damian Walls from Troy. He's a wide receiver. Trevor Davis, a wide receiver from California. Uh, okay. Stephen Mitchell, USC wide receiver. Tight end out of North Illinois, Daniel Crawford. And uh, a defensive lineman, Mustafa Johnson from Colorado. Any of these names ringing a bell? Have you? The tight end. Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. None of these names were ringing a bell to me, but. Yeah. The tight end is the only one I've, I've heard the name before. Okay, cool. Um, 
I thought what was also cool was our undrafted free agents that we signed. I like the four O linemen in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, two defensive backs, four offensive linemen, two D linemen, a kicker and a tight end. Yeah. And, and right now, smart money says the kicker probably makes this team, you know, <laughs> that's what I've been hearing. And yeah. I even heard Salas say that this, the kid's got a shot, like a really good shot to make yeah. the team. Now for all you jet fans out there, you're savvy. You probably know the internet and everything better than us. There's some footage of this kicker from SMU, I believe, kicking a 71-yard field goal. That's incredible. I believe it's That's a field incredible. I don't think it's just a regular, you know, schlub kick. I haven't seen it yet, guys and girls. So if you've seen it, comment and let us know. But can you imagine? What's the NFL record? Six, 66? It, it, it was 63, but I believe now it's 64 or 66. You might be right. I think the kid on the Eagles might have did it a few years ago against the Giants. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. But 71 yards? Yeah. Well, you got to look at it this way, Kevin. If this kid is money, every time we're in the 50, we're in scoring. We're, we That's right. Score. That's right. And that you gives know how that, long it's been since we had a good kicker? Yeah. Like, like a guy that you could just say, oh, there's three points. So you, you already know it's coming. My, for me, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just naive or I was young, so it was my introduction. Pat Leahy, to me, has always been their best Pat kicker. Leahy. They, do they have, did they have, they had a better field goal kicker to your memory after Pat? No. No. Nugent was supposed to be good. He yeah, kind of, yeah. After he yeah. he kind of wet the bed. Yeah. You know, I, I like Nick Falk. I think he was money. Falk was good. I, 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 liked, I like John Hall. Okay. Now, you know who was really good, but he, he priced himself out of it. And I it, the name is eluding me. Oh, now. He, wound the, up the, signing, uh, he wound up signing with Seattle. I know who you mean. Made the Pro Bowl and everything. Yeah, and we let him go. Yeah. Because we didn't want to pay him the money. He was probably one of our best since again, I might be young to remember Myers? Pat Lay. What's it? Let's say it again. Myers? But, yeah, I think you're right. I think that's a hundred percent right. Okay. I think that's a hundred percent. You know, people, you can tell we don't rehearse these things because we don't know the names all the no, time. No, man, we're winging it. Let's go. Yeah, Let's yeah, go. We just Let's want to let you know. We just come on here and talk. Nothing is scripted. Yeah, no nothing BS, is no BS here. No yeah. BS. We screw keep, up the keep names. Keeping it real. Keeping yeah, it real. Exactly. We screw up the names. We forget it. what guy did what. Nothing's rehearsed. This is. And that's why you love us. Exactly. <laughs> this is as raw as the metal music we listen to. <laughs> So oh man, we, we touched on the rookie mini camp. Yep. And that will end on Sunday. And then you got two and a half weeks later, you're talking about the OTAs and the, and the off season workouts. Wow, it's going fast, they, isn't it? Yeah. Before you, before you know it, it's going to be training camp. Yep. So you got 424. Then it's a day off 26th and the 27th. This is of May. Then it's mm -hmm. six, one day off the third and the fourth of June. Then they come back seven, eight day off. 10 and 11 of June. Then they got five days off and they come back for the 15th, 16th, 17th. After that, sometime in July, they'll start meeting as a, a sure. full unit. And yeah. And, and I mean, once we get to July 25th, 26th, 27th, that's it's time. It's go time. Yeah. We're going to, cuts will be made. Team will be taking shape. And we already made some cuts. Again, these names weren't names that jumped out to me. Maybe they are for you. The only one that jumped out to me really was Connor Davis. Really? Guy. And the only one that jumped out to me was Josh, Josh Doxson, the wide receiver, because we got him, I think, as a free agency from the Redskins. He jumped out to me. But Kyron Brown went. He's a tight. He's a cornerback. We cut the kick at Chase McLaughlin, which shows you they that really shows like you him. this kid is coming on. Yeah, yes. and this is probably just on film because who's his competition? Is there another kicker on this team that he's competing with? Who oh, was our oh. kicker last year? Because we went through kickers like oh, oh who was that guy? <laughs> I don't remember. But we went through kickers like he oh, was that man. good. We don't remember. <laughs> yeah. And then the wide receiver, they cut uh, Jaleel Scott. So that was the five cuts they made this week. And uh, 
We did lose two members to free agency. Texans sign Neville Hewitt away from us. Oh, man, that bums me out. I like Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Steelers signed safety Arthur M- uh, Mullet, which was he was playing nice for us. He was a nice little and cog in the machine. But the fact that Hewitt is gone is starting to make me think that Mosley is, is staying. Yeah, I think so. It, I think so. You got to put him in there. He's the captain. Yeah. He's the captain of that defense. You, that, that's what I'm saying. You look at you look at the up front and you got. Uh, Quinn and Williams, Carl Lawson. Then you got Mosley in the middle. I, I love Lawson. Yeah, May in the backfield. Now you got three guys who could put people in the right place, mm-hmm. you know. And this is why, you know what, Sherman? You come, you come. If you don't, I'm not losing sleep. Yeah. I want the Nelson kid. I'll say it again. I want the kid from the Steelers. I, I know some Steeler fan told me he, he no loss. But I, and are I, we I, ever going to shore up the right side of the offensive line? Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I mean, Fisher, Fisher is still out there. What are you waiting Wait, for? I don't know because Villanova Wave is off the market. He's gone. He came off Tuesday. The Ravens picked him up. Yep. Two year deal. I wrote it down somewhere what the contract was. I'll snoo- yeah. snooze, you lose, you know? Let's yeah. go. Two year deal, 14 million, 8 million guaranteed. We couldn't match that? Well, whatever. I mean, another guy. got a lot of money left, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, mean, and I, I, really, I don't know. Maybe you're waiting for, for cuts when I we get guess. into June and July. I don't I know. Yeah, so they're waiting to see when the fir- the final four free agents sign. But that free – that I mean, not free agent, uh, draft class money. I thought that draft class money was allocated already. That's already comes off the books. So they have – they. I mean, I thought that is how it works. So they should know what they have left. Of course. There's a backup quarterback. What are we waiting for? Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not all Hoya be all end all. <laughs> <laughs> that's true but let's get someone i, don't I wanna... mean you gotta get uh, you gotta get somebody in here soon yeah, you have you, to you can't tell me we're gonna live with captain morgan <laughs> you know i'm sorry i mean the sooner you can get a veteran in here and and get him in the quarterback room and get him in this kid's ear uh, I, I don't know i agree with you i agree with you and you know what? In Sherman's case, with the Raiders signing a quarterback, a cornerback this week, his his numbers are narrow. But the hot buzzes, he's going back to the 49ers. And you know what, Kev? At this point, they could have him. I wouldn't be surprised if he shows up here eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what else will we have this week? Uh, Quentin Williams got his surgery yesterday. Yeah, successful. They're looking at yeah, successful. That's recovery. a good thing. Should be ready by training camp. Yeah, eight to ten week recovery, which is okay. Which is okay. We could live with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. Also, oh, did you also read that? Um, at least for the mini camps, I don't know. I don't know if these numbers will stick, but these players got their numbers, so we could actually talk about, you know, break it out here on our podcast. What these new players will be wearing? Again, we don't know if these numbers will stick. But they have well, their numbers. Zach's, yeah. Zach's mom tweeted that he's number two. So, <laughs> so I had a I had a good laugh yesterday with my better half and said, "Well, you know what? I have to take it back because mom was right. Mom knows best." Yeah, mom but, knew number two, yeah, but she should have put it out there so quick, like let some drama. It was so funny because played. when he got there, they asked him about, "Hey, your mom said you're taking number two. Yeah. He's like, oh, "Well, I, I don't know. Did yeah. she?" Exactly. Try to play stupid, but yeah, she broke the story before Rich Samini. It's like, mom, relax, relax, please. Yeah, she. <laughs> let me let me handle this. Yeah, mom, enough. They're they're already. I don't know. I don't know if you listen to WFAN. It's a sports talk radio here in in, in New York City. I'm sure you could get it out there as well. Mm-hmm. They're already like one one of the 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 sports guys on there was interviewing Zach Wilson. But complimenting the mom, and I'm like, come on, that's not professional. But hey, whatever. I, I don't have a talk show, but how these guys get one is beyond me. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't rip people, but like you're interviewing the kid and you're comp and you're talking about his mom. I mean, there's gotta be like, you know, what's that? The line drawn in the sand, like when's enough enough with that? Yeah, right. But anyway, so let's talk about so Wilson's wearing two. Um uh, Carter one is wearing 30. 
Carter two is wearing thirty two. <laughs> Hey, it's oh, right? man, you can't make it up. Right? You called it last week. Was it you who said Carter one, Carter two? Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. That's that's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, Dunn is wearing 36. Echoes numbers 25. The kicker is wearing one. Uh, Sherwood 44. Nazril Dean, I think that's how you pronounce it, 45. The wide receiver more, eight. He's wearing number eight. Okay. He, wow, number eight, huh? Yeah, because now they're letting them, they're, they're doing away with where the wide receivers have to be in the 80s. They're doing away with that this year, where you could wear a single digit number if you're a receiver. They're even talking about bringing back zero or double zero. So the NFL. Imagine, is- imagine your number being double zero. Hey, I, you know, they named a few players who were, and I should have taken notes on who they were, but there were a few. In basketball, we know, um, uh, was it was it Robert Parrish for the Celtics or McHale? They were, I think, double zero, mm-hmm. either one mm-hmm. of them. But yeah, that's a great number. You're double zero. It's it shines, it pops. You you well, I mean, it. it'd be an appropriate number on, on the Jets. Yeah, especially, yeah. Yeah. So Marshall 96, Pinock 41, Vera Tucker 75. And uh you behold the uh, unrestricted uh, free agent that we signed, the tight end, who I think might make this team as a dark horse, you know, 48. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't know if these numbers stay with them, if, if they make the team or they'll have to switch it up. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. But these are their numbers right now. So it, it's cool. Like, it's taking shape. It's coming like, together. It's coming yeah. together. I can't, you know, like we said last week, let's play with the toy. Put it out there, you know. Let's go. You got to love it. Go. You, you got to love it. Yeah. Yep. So hey, oh, another just, cut that another cut the Jets made was a defensive end, John Daka, which the Rams picked up within 24 hours. Wow. So yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, some of these guys are gonna get snatched right up. We know that. Yeah. But I mean, the idea is to constantly improve. No, agree. Know? Hey, bring in bring in as many wide receivers. Who was it, who was it that used to say turn over every rock? Yeah, I, I don't know who, but I, I know I heard I heard this saying in Mayor. Hey, competition is good. Nobody walks into these doors guaranteed a job. That's right. I don't care if you've been here four or five years now. This is a new regime, a new way of thinking. Go out there and prove that you belong on this team. Absolutely. You know, nothing's, you know, I just feel like with past jet teams, uh, certain players had seniority and the jobs were handed to them. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling. Yeah, yeah. And it was. I, I, there could have been favoritism going yeah. on, you know, who knows, who knows? So, I, I, some of our locker rooms were really toxic. Oh they yeah. Really were. Oh yeah. So, oh, and, and, and whether that was some of the guys that were in there, I don't know the combination of the people that were in there. Yeah. Who knows? Not, not strong leadership from the players themselves, you know, if you don't got a veteran in there that's going to take charge and 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 squish this crap when it uh-huh. starts, yeah. Like now, I so said, that, you got a toxic environment. So in saying that, Quinn and Williams is going into year three. It's time for him. I know Mosley's there. I know Mosley's there, and I know Lawson's there. But Lawson's new to the club. Mosley to me is new to the club, even though he's been on the contract for two years. We've only seen him for 60, 30 minutes of football. I think it's time when Quinn and Williams comes back, or even Marcus May, but I'd rather be Quinn and Williams, grab all the defense around him and say, you know what? This is how we're doing it. This is how it's done. Follow my lead, and let's run through a brick wall and get this job done. These guys, Some of these guys got to step up. You know, these, it's time these, now these for three and four in. year guys. It's time yeah. to step up. It, Marcus May, I want you here. I hope Joe D gets a deal for you, but you have to show now this is your team. You're yeah. the captain in that backfield. And if Quinnen's not going to do it, you talk up. I'm I sure mean, everything he- I read said they're working on a long, they want to get a long term deal done for May. So, May, yes. Yes. We also signed the receiver off the 49ers. Uh, uh, we claimed off the 49 as a wide receiver, Matt Cole. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. He's been in the league two years, I think. He's 24 years old. He's only played in one game. 
But I, but I look at it this way. I don't know what this kid is going to do or be or become. Let everyone fight for a job. Listen, there's 12 wide receivers. Six of you made the team. Show us who the six best. And Absolutely. I don't care right now if you're ranked one or you're ranked 12 on our board. Prove that you're one of the six or seven to make this team. So competition mm -hmm. for me, bring it in. Bring oh, it in. Listen, competi uh, competition breeds excellence yeah it really does we want the best 11 on offense the best 11 on defense you know we don't want the best nine and then the next the next three went and eh, we had nothing left so we had to put these guys in and that's what i feel what the gates era was yeah competition okay. hey competition makes everybody better everybody. You know? and, and and i'm sorry like if the jets and I know the running back room is full and they're very high on the kid from North Carolina, Carter. But if the Jets cut P. Ryan, a young kid, because they saw nothing because Gase never used them, I think that's bad on their part. Mm -hmm. I think oh, they, absolutely. You know, I think they need to keep the young kid and see. Now, unless unless they feel he he's a good viable trade piece for you know to get some more draft picks next year, right? Fine. But I can't just see, you know, already people say, oh, Piran's going to be the one to go. Piran, I don't see it. I don't see it. I want to see this kid run. Yeah, you come know? on, man. It, it, it doesn't hurt to have a nice stable of running backs. It yeah. really doesn't. Yeah, I think four would have to make the club. I think you could go with four. Sure. You know? Sure. I agree. So I it's, agree. It, it's, it's the kid we signed from the 49ers. I can't think of his name. You keep this Carter. P. Ryan and Adams. I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. I know. No, I, I totally agree. I, totally I know everyone's high on the Ty Johnson kid. He was the one who had the hundred yard game against the Raiders because he's a he's a different type of back. I like him. Yeah, I like him. But so then let's see. Like again, there's five. Take the best four and make sure that one you don't want is a good viable trade piece. Take the best four and let's run with it. Yeah, but don't let that fifth guy just cut him. See if he's good no, enough. Get something. Could, get something. Exactly. Stop I mean, giving. Can... Stop giving away players. Exactly. Like we talked about how well Joe D did. He started the draft with ten. Then after day one, it was one less, but he finished up with ten. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I, again, I, this isn't because I said to the viewers last week I would go see what the Panthers did. Panthers started off the draft with eight and finished with eleven. That's a nice job. Exactly. That's a nice exactly. job on their part. You know, absolutely. Yep. And, and they and they picked up some, you know, they picked up, you know, oh, where's my goddamn list? Sorry. Keep talking. I'll find it. I mean, <laughs> they picked up players. I mean, they picked up, you know, here it is. Out of the 11 picks, they got two cornerbacks. Excellent. Nice. OK, they got a long snapper. They got two wide receivers to bring into a room where they already had three good wide receivers. They brought in another running back to play behind Christian McCafferty, maybe, just in case he gets injured. Mm -hmm. All right. They went tight end. And then they went two defensive tackles and two offensive linemen. Nice job. All, nice job. All, yeah. And their offensive line was a little better than us. Not much. But again, hey, they, hey, it didn't take much to be better than ours. No, no, that's true. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, that's a nice, like, listen, I'm not taking anything away from Joe D because I do like what he did. Mm -hmm. But when you see, like, you turned eight picks into 11, now we don't know what these players are going to become. Right, that's exactly. A, that's a nice day. Yes. You know, but I'm yes. not going to, I'm not going to knock Joe. We, we started with 10, we finished with 10. We seem okay. to be impressed with all 10. Like, we're not sitting here going, what? Well, you're like, yeah. yeah, like how many draft days did we sit there and it's a, with the first pick in the blah, 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 draft, the New York Jets, and yeah. everybody's like, what? Or even or even the later rounds, like you felt like McCagnan just wanted to go home and just threw a dart and said, oh, punt that we yeah, got Yeah, it. yeah, he, yeah, oh, give me a hand. You know, long snapper, we got it, you know. Pick a name out of a hat. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I know. But... So, hey, I wanted to get into some of these jet stories since we're I'm a ready. little slow here today. Okay, cool. I'm ready. Let's li I'll, I'm listening. I came across some cool stuff this week. Okay. Going through that. I was going through some old stuff in the attic and stuff. How about this for a, for a throwback? Nice. I don't know if you can see that. Sunday. Star the Star Ledger. Okay. Every Sunday. 
used to be at the stadium giving out papers and okay. stuff. And every week, every home game, they had a different insert. Wow. Inside. So we're going to <laughs> look, at, look at that face. God. Yeah. <laughs> He's even mad in the photo. He's even mad in the photo. <laughs> Green machine. You got Very Wayne Capet. Nice. You got Curtis Martin. You got Very Vinny. Nice. Now, you Kevin. Keyshawn. Do you remember who they were playing that day? Uh, Monday, December 6th. It might have been Seattle. Really? Okay. I, I will go back and look at the schedule. That we could find easy. December 6th. Yeah. 98. Do you so, remember that? That was Harry, the, I have a good memory about game. that. I have a good memory about that right, game. Go ahead, because if it was Seattle, I know what you're talking about, but go for it. Okay, Seattle was was winning. Yep. We're on that last drive. Testa Verde on the quarterback sneak. Yeah. Falls about a yard or a half a yard or a, a half a yard short of the end zone. Okay. They call it a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, now, you're like, I was, see, I was being generous. I was like two inches, but you're probably more right. It was, yeah, it was like, like a half a yard. yard. It was like a half a yard. And, and I, I'll never forget Parcells after the game. They asked him about it. And he yeah. goes, you know, sometimes God is playing. <laughs> God yeah. has a hand. In no, play. because he said, sometimes really, you just got to be really lucky. Yeah. Yeah. That, he knew that, it wasn't a touchdown. And there was no review back then. So. Oh, I thought they did review it, but oh, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe there was no, because I know they kept oh, showing if it they over. reviewed that, there's no way because he was, <laughs> yeah, he was a half a yard short. They showed it over and over and over and over. Yes. yes. I, and I knew that was the play you were going to bring up. Here's another one. Okay. Give me the damn ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I felt like he, uh, what else? I felt like from day one, Keyshawn was crying. Like he never was. Yeah, happy. yeah. Well, that, you know? I think he was. He wanted all of the spotlight, and Corbett was taking some of it away from yeah. him. So, because yeah. you know, every Corbett was a favorite. Yeah, never. Oh, you know? and, and and Keyshawn didn't like that. No, I never mean, seemed to grasp the team concept. Very nice. Yeah, I have one of those in storage somewhere. Very cool. Very cool. And this was a day I went. Nice. So who are some of the signatures? Tell the folks. Oh, man. We got Freeman on there. We got Joe Klecko. We got Chris wow. Burkett. We have Vinny. Wow. We have Curtis Martin. Nice. We have Jim Sweeney. We have Victor Green. Nice. Nice. That one I can't read, <laughs> but again, a lot of fun. Nice. And the best one here is one day. See, there used to be a time when you could park in the same lot as the players. Okay. Before all this crazy crap happened and everything. Mm -hmm. And man, we used to park there and tailgate all the time Okay. before or after games. And I can remember. There were sometimes Ronnie Lott was a couple cars from us. There were sometimes Freeman McNeil was a couple cars from us. So one day <laughs> after the game, I can't even remember. They might have played the Bills. I, I, I'm trying to remember. But we were hanging out, and here comes Freeman McNeil, Joe Klecko, and Jim Sweeney. Wow. Walking out of the stadium after okay. the game. Okay. We say, hey, guys, what's up? Great game and everything. Yeah. And they waved, and they said, Hey, you guys want to, we said to him, Hey, you guys want a beer? Okay. <laughs> and they said, nice. hell yeah. All right. <laughs> so they came over and we hung nice. out for a little while and, uh, I got Freeman. Uh, you probably can't see it on there. Now nah, you can't see it. Anyway, Freeman, Jim Sweeney, Joe Klecko, all got them all to sign everything. Nice. So we had a good, I, I, time. we had a good time that, that, that day. Those jackets, as a kid, we used to wore them. They were like that shiny green. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I my my friend had a cowboy. Another one had a steel. And then the one I really used to love because it had the old sixty nine uh, emblem on it was the green with the white leather with the sleeve. white leather sleeves. That was the best. And you know, Kevin, I kick myself now because I, I, okay, you learn along the way. And I'm trying to teach my son this stuff. Now that he's a Jet fan, these are things as a, a young kid, I wish I would have saved. Yeah. I you, wish I would have saved these. You didn't, it, it, you didn't give a crap back yeah. then. It was like, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like, oh, man, no. I wish I had that. 
Yeah, like I, I, I was never into collecting cards, but I did collect my Jet teams if I could find them. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any of those cards. The only card I have, and I'm going to dig it up because I, I believe it's here somewhere. I have a, a, a Browning Nagel. Brown, I got tons of Browning Nagels. Yes. I was the only one who had a jersey. I have to see if that's in storage. I was the only, and it said Nagel, and I wore it proudly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I have... We got him from the Cardinals. He was the running back. Uh, Johnny, Johnny Johnson. Johnson. I have his card. Yeah. I have hey, an I Jet used to have a Johnny Johnson jersey. Yeah. I have I'll an tell you what happened to him, I and love a, Johnny gonna, Johnson. Yeah. I'm going to try to pull those cards out for next week's show. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Let's start let's start showing some of our stuff. Here yeah. I, I don't have I don't have much. I am going to my storage room tomorrow. Before I go see my my mother in law and mother for Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day, Happy to Mother's Day to there. all the mothers out there. By the way, yeah. If I still have the the um, oh God, what was the player's name? The linebacker. Anyway, I have it framed. If I find it, I'll bring it home and put it behind me for next week. So okay, all we right. Can have some fun with that. Because who is that? I got a question for you and I and all the Jeff fans out there. Okay. Who is your favorite, most unknown player on the Jets ever? My favorite. And I, I mean, don't mean I don't mean the stars. I mean yeah. somebody who flew under the radar. Right, so, so is he unknown to the league or is he unknown to Jet fans? Like somebody? Uh, probably both. I mean, okay. us old Jet fans might remember him, but. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a name. He's my favorite Jet. He's still my favorite Jet, only because when we played tackle football as young kids, I played that position. I loved him. Uh, not many Jet fans I ever heard, at least where I live, talk about him. I'll let you decide if he's underrated or if he's a well-known Lance Mel. Loved Lance Mel. My face Love still him. still fits in my top ten whenever I do one. What he a lives, linebacker! Yeah. What a Lovely linebacker. and smell. Mickey Shula was another name for me. I got one for you to look Go up. For it. And ancient history, but always one of my – the guy played like old school. Okay. Like when you're down, he would – you know, he was yeah, the yeah, type yeah, yeah. that would stick his finger in your eye. Stan okay. Blinka. Okay. Look up Stan Blinka. Okay. What What year – like I said, oh, you're man. a few years older than me, so it what year was early, early 70s? 80s? No, early 80s. Okay. Maybe. But I'll have to look because the name's not – I mean, I started watching the Jets. I was seven, so I was 76, 77. I'll have to look him up. I mean, a lot of a lot, I remember his rep was a dirty player. Okay. But I think he just he just played the game old school, man. I okay. love it. I remember one time we were playing the Packers. Okay. Okay. James Lofton, wide receiver. Yep, yep. Okay. He goes running out. <laughs> Blinka clotheslines him with his arm. I mean, clotheslined him. He flipped so hard uh -huh. backwards, and that's it. All the flags start coming wow. out. And Stan Blinka's going, what? What did I do? <laughs> wow. So, so speaking of that play, because we know that the Raiders were known as a dirty team, even when we were watching football 80s. Can you name a quarterback in the league today in the last 20 years that could play in the 70s and 80s and survive? Good question. Hmm. I think the game got so soft. And I'm not taking anything away from the Aaron Rodgers, the Tom Brady's, you know. I think the game got so soft it did. that, you know, these guys couldn't play. In I the mean, 70s. some of these QBs these days, you look at, especially like take the Brady or somebody, yeah. you look at them cross right, uh, yeah. cross side and the ref throws the flag. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the only, that's the only thing to me where football's lost. It's, it's, it's luster a little, it's, it's, yeah. it's ferociousness. Wow. It's fearsomeness is that, they protect the quarterbacks. It, it became a star-driven game. And listen, they're making a truckload of money. And guys like us sit here and talk about it year-round. So we know they're doing something right. So far be it for me to critique it. But I, I always wonder what Brady would have been like 
playing on a 1977 New England Patriot team. You know? Like, Steve Brogan was a tough Steve dude. Brogan was a tough son of a bitch. Yeah. Absolutely. Jim Ferguson for Buffalo. And I'm not taking anything away from Jim Kelly. He was a tough dude, too. Yeah. He played, but, like, Jim Ferguson, Richard Todd coming out with the flag jacket. You yep. know, until yep. Saturday night if he was going to play. Yep. Blunk it. And then you go even older. Len Dawson, like, watch films of Name It. The man can't even hobble. And the- yeah, I mean... <laughs> The guy's knees. I mean, he was lucky he could walk. Not only that, but you see some of the. He was out of bounds, and the Raiders were giving him the business, as oh, we I like mean, to say. Even, there's so many old school players, man. That, that look at. Remember Cotchery? Yeah. Remember the one game where he must have pulled his hamstring or something. Okay. And he was. It was a huge play. Uh-huh. He went out for the pass and he must have pulled it when he ran out. And he was like on one leg and he yeah. was still like this trying to yeah. catch the. I mean, these guys had grit, man. Yeah, no, I know. I know. And, and I understand the game has changed because owners now look at these players as investments. And as soon as their investments injured, they rather not push them. They rather let them sit out for eight games and come back and still honor their three, four year deals. Right. But back in the 70s, it was like if I didn't play, my contract was getting torn up and I wasn't going to be back next week or next year. So yeah, it was a different game, different time. I know it's apples to oranges. It's not, I, I just wanted to bring it out there. Like, I, I always look at these quarterbacks and I'm like, these guys couldn't muster it. You know, Hey man, I, I, I'm an old schooler. Yeah. Whether it's football music. Yeah. Heavy metal, whatever. Yeah. I, there was nothing like the old. No, agree. Guys. No, don't get, no, don't get me wrong, Kevin. In saying that, Ronnie Lott couldn't survive in this NFL because everything he did, the little nudges, the holding, the little things you got away with, you can't do anymore. Listen, you can't give that shot over the middle. You know, we were playing Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I'm listening to this game. We were playing Buffalo. Don Beebe went out for a pass. Ronnie Lott hit him, mm-hmm. knocked him out cold. BB was laying on the ground and his yeah. arm was sticking straight yeah. up in the air and they like couldn't put it down and he was out cold, yeah. man. And I'll never forget the announcer being like, whoa, he just got hit by an elephant gun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. lots walking around. What? What's the big yeah. deal? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Locke couldn't play that style today. But, again, the league has changed. It's involved. We roll with the punches. Like I said, we just wanted to throw some stuff out there. And, you know. And but he was, uh, a, he was a great guy, too, Ronnie, because, again, when they could park in the same lot as we did, yeah. or we could park in the same lot as they did. Yeah. I'll never forget, I had, his, I had his rookie card. And I was like, oh, man, I got I to gotta get this signed. I got to get this yeah, signed. Yeah. Okay? And sure enough. He's in the car with his wife and they're pulling out. And I'm like, I go over to the to his car with my card and a pen like this. And I see his wife in the passenger seat going, just just go. Just yeah, go. who is this go. nut? Drive away. Just go. Just keep going. <laughs> and sure enough, he stops, rolls down the window, says, Hey, give me your card. Boom, 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 boom. Signed it, handed it back to me. <laughs> And I don't think his wife was very happy, but I sure as hell was. <laughs> you, just, you just jogged my memory real quick before we wrap this up. Uh, I was at, um, this was a few years ago. I don't even know how many years. I'll ask my wife and I'll, I'll bring it up next week. We were at, um, we were with some friends. We were at um, a burger and beer tasting thing. It, Blue Moon just hit the market, the beer Blue Moon. So they were pushing it and they were doing this burgers and beers night. Right. And I met and I met Nick Mango. Nice. He might have oh. been in his rookie year. It might have been his second year. That's how long ago it was. One of my favorite Jets. Yeah. And I hung out with him and he signed a napkin for me, but I don't think I have. <laughs> but if I do, I'll, I'll save it. And, you know, I'm not I'm not tall, but I consider myself a thick guy, you know. I remember my friends teasing me saying, oh, you came out of your mother that size. Like, I've never got any bigger. Like, I've been this guy <laughs> since I'm two, you know? And I walked over to him, and I shook his hand, and my hand disappeared. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know? And, I, and, I, and I'm carrying a little over 200 pounds. So walking up to him, it's like, whoa! <laughs> but the nicest man I ever met, good dude. Love oh, listening yeah. to the man best. who stories One of the and best. everything. Yeah. One of the best. Yep. All right, Kevin, this was great. All right, brother, this was a good one. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you guys have a great weekend. 
and uh, keep tuning in because, hey, and we'd love to have some of you as our guests. Wouldn't you look great right in the middle here with us? I think so. Yeah, and you don't have to be a Jet fan. You want, you're want a uh, Patriot doesn't matter fan. Who, doesn't yeah, come matter on, talk what with your us. team is. Come on, hop on. Let's yeah. do it. If, if, if one thing is we're fair, we're not going to, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear from everybody. Listen, we're pretty humble, too, as Jeff fans. So, yeah. come on. Yeah. Let's hear we what you got to say. We don't wear right? the rose-colored glasses. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right brother. You have a good weekend. You too. Happy Mother's Day to all you Jet moms out there. Yes, everywhere. And moms, and, yeah. uh, we'll see you next week, all right? Yep. Sounds good. Jet up. Talk to you later. All right, brother. Good one, brother. You too.